The Nobel Assembly at Karolinska Institutet today decided to award the Nobel Prize in Physiology of Medicine 2009 jointly to Elizabeth Blackburn, Carol Graydon and Jack Shostak for the discovery of how chromosomes are protected by telomeres and the enzyme telomerase. This is it. What? This is the world first. It's our baby. It's measuring 100,000 telomere lengths in 100,000 people. So as we've learned more and more about telomeres, the question is, are they really a, a key to understanding life and disease? And in humans, I think we can say they're definitely a part of the picture. And the reason is that we know from many basic research studies that when telomeres no longer are protecting chromosome ends, which happens because they wear down with time and with life, then there are some pathological changes that happen to cells. And then we see that that promotes certain kinds of diseases. And there's good reason from basic research to think that it's promoting some of the important chronic diseases that occur in aging of humans. get diseases that play out in different ways, diabetes, cardiovascular. So it makes a lot of sense that it's the same underlying molecular mechanism that can affect what we think of traditionally as so many different diseases. And that's just because medicine has focused on the different diseases as very particular diseases to be treated. But now we know there's a common underlying set of factors, which is the telomere maintenance as just one part of many factors that together make a chance of whether someone will have a development of a disease of one kind or another. What happens to people in their lives and how that has physiological effects that in turn can affect how healthy they can stay or conversely how likely they are to develop certain chronic, particularly chronic diseases. But what's really interesting is that people who have telomeres that in a two-year period, two and a half years, they, if they went up or stayed the same, their chances of dying from cardiovascular disease in the next 11 years was actually noticeably lower than the people whose telomeres went down in that two and a half years. So going down over two and a half years predicted in the next 11 years whether you would die of cardiovascular disease. So our research in the lab, over many years, many researchers have been able to measure telomeres and how they're maintained in cells very accurately, in, in people, in cells. Something that's as big as how a perceived stress is going on in a person, how much a person feels a stress. That seems like something very different from cells, and yet it quantitatively relates to how short telomeres are. Somebody who's chronically having to look after a child who's ill from some disease that is just, you know, they can't be cured of the disease, or somebody who's looking after a life partner who has dementia years and years, and yet people vary enormously in how they respond to that. And so you quantify that, and you find it's how they perceive the stress that quantitatively relates to how short the telomeres are. Social well-being in different ways, measured by how bad neighborhoods are, how much a child is exposed to violence. We measure telomere shortness and we find quantitative relationships, things that include, for example, you know, very, um, you know, not even very bad, just sort of fairly bad socioeconomic settings. It's having effects that you can quantify. So uh, and we know those are negative effects.
We're all stressed when we run a marathon, of course we're stressed. When we get up and give a talk, of course we're stressed. But it turns out those are challenges. It's the chronic stress that is seen as threats. How threatening it seems to the person and how much they feel they have resources to cope with it. So the good news is that somebody who's in a very long-term stressful situation, while statistically they have a higher chance of developing shorter telomeres and in turn the risks for the diseases that are predicted by shorter telomeres because those telomeres cause problems in cells, in the end we can see that how somebody's brain is using that information about the stress and able to handle it. We also know that people vary enormously in how resilient they are. And so resilience is the counter to that. When that was shown over and over again to relate to how short telomeres were, you know, that really spoke to me. That really, that hit me where I could really understand it because I live and breathe and think about telomeres, you know, all the time and I've done that for decades. So here was something that um, was impacting in ways that we really know have effects on, on human health. And, and I think that changes me, you know, I, I think I've always, you know, had a sense of social justice. You know, I don't like to see unfairness and, you know, really exploitation of, you know, people in vulnerable positions and so on. And so here was all of that, combining with this, well, this is really having serious effects. So it has made me think more about this. And at this point, you know, the best I can do is, as I say, you know, do science, which is what I can do, but also try and at least explain that there really is some real consequences. Um, you know, I think of something like wars in countries, civil wars in countries, and I think, what is that doing to the telomeres in the children? You know, <laughs> I mean, you know, of course there's many, many or more issues, but it just gives you a, a kind of very concrete lens on, on, on things and say, what are we doing? <laughs> you know, uh, because we know it's bad, but here's, here's another reason that it's, it's really, you know, vulnerable people are being affected in all sorts of different ways. Well, my picture when I got the news, I, I, it was the middle of the night for me. And so my picture was, first of all, that, oh, I'm so glad this call in the middle of the night was not about something having happened to a relative of the family, right? And, and then secondly, I just so remember well the chairman of the committee, the Nobel Committee, who called me, he could tell I was very sleepy and he said, the press is going to come and he said, you better have a cup of coffee. And my husband made the coffee right away, <laughs> which is so wonderful of him. <laughs> Thank you.